Hello, my name is uh, Cesar Saavedra. I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab covering the uh, CD and GitOps uh, go-to-market use cases. In this segment, I'll cover uh, the features multiple Terraform plans supporting merge requests and read-only access to Terraform state API. Uh, this is the agenda that I will follow for both of the uh, for both of the features. The first one will be multiple Terraform plan support in MRs. Uh, for first, uh, some context. Uh, GitOps takes uh, DevOps best practices used uh, for application development and applies them to infrastructure automation. GitOps is also one of our uh, go-to-market use cases. We partner with HashiCorp for some of our GitOps features. Terraform is an open source uh, infrastructure as code tool created by HashiCorp which enables users to define and provision infrastructure using a declarative configuration language. The Terraform plan command summarizes expected infrastructure changes. It generates an execution plan, which uh, is basically a set of necessary actions to achieve the desired end state for the infrastructure. It, it's also a way to check uh, uh, the set of changes without making any changes to the real uh, resources or the state. Uh, the uh, And then um, and for example, you know, before committing change to version control system, in our case, a merge request is the place to run the Terraform plan command. The current state of this feature uh, is that during a single Terraform pipeline, several infrastructure environments might be affected. Previously, GitLab enabled a quick overview of the expected changes in a merge request only for a single environment. Starting with uh, GitLab 13.2, uh, the Terraform Merge Request widget supports multiple Terraform artifact uh, files, like you see in this screen snapshot. This is actually uh, obtained from an MR and that um, with a pipeline that has run and he has actually um, done Terraform plan on three different environments, uh, staging, production, and review, and you can actually access them as artifacts from the MR. So why does it matter for customers? Um, you know, when managing infrastructure as code, many environments are typically touched. Uh, production, uh, staging, for example. Um, customers can now review what infrastructure changes will take place across multiple environments in a merge request, not be limited just to one. And also this will lower the risk of in introducing errors uh, into, in infrastructure configurations into production, uh, diminishing risk and eliminating unexpected downtime. So, What's in it for us? Uh, it helps us to better position our integration points with Terraform. It enriches our infrastructure uh, as code story, and it provides us with an, an entry point um, into Terraform accounts. All right, so let's jump into the demo. So this is a project that has uh, uh, a uh, GitLab CI pipeline right, right at the at the top at the top level, and uh, there are three environments think of these uh, of directories as three different environments uh, review staging and production and the description for each of these directories is here basically the modules uh, consist of all the terraforms that are reusable modules that will be reused by by each of the uh, environments production review and staging and within each uh, environment there are a set of terraform configuration files as you can see here they're all the same uh, with minor modifications for each environment, obviously. Uh, so you, you can apply different values for each of the environments. And here we have the main CI configuration. And let's go into there. So here the, the uh, key areas to remember or to, to go over to be able to exercise this feature, you need to have a Terraform plan uh, step which is right here. Okay. Uh, you also need to uh, be able to cache, cache the uh, the Terraform direct the dot Terraform directories that are generated for each of the environments. You need to have the artifacts saved for each of the environments separately, and we have a step for the actual generation uh, of the plans uh, for each of the environment. Here you have one for review, one for staging, and one for production. So with that said, let's go and check 
let's create an issue. Uh, let's say um, we can say uh, clean up some debug statements. And let's submit the issue. And then let's uh, get start working. Let's work on it. And then we're going to clean up. We're going to open it and we're going to create a merge request. And in that merge request, we're going to open the web IDE. And let's go to the GitLab uh, pipeline and let's just uh, make a small change. Here we can just delete uh, these lines here. There you go. And then we commit to yeah to that branch, and it's gonna fire up a pipeline. And the pipeline looks like this. Uh, we're going to be running um, Terraform init first to initialize the, um, the Terraform environment. Uh, we are talking to an HTTP based state file, which uh, is being stored on the GitLab end. And uh, then we're going to go into the validate step, which gonna be, we're going to be doing a Terraform validate to make sure that all the changes we've applied um, Terraform changes are okay, are good. In the build step, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be generating the plans for each of these environments. There we go. So here, if we go into the job itself, um, okay, so that's the plan right there, as you can see. These are all the changes that will be happening. And then let's go back. Let's refresh this to make sure it's complete. So the merge is done. Let's go back to the MR. So here are the three Terraform reports. Uh, one for staging, one for production, and one for review. And for example, we can look at the production one. And when we view the log, it takes us to the, um, the basically the job uh, output, the runner output. Okay, this is basically the new feature is that now, uh, you know, the plans for different environments can be uh, added to the MR as artifacts. So let's, uh, now that the MR is complete and we've uh, checked that it's run okay, let's, uh, let's merge. So let's mark as ready. And let's merge. All right, so now that it's merged, um, there should be another pipeline already running right here, which has a deployment step. Here you can see there's uh, these two are manual. Uh, you can actually deploy staging or production. And while that's running, we can go to the Amazon console and log in here. We're going to have a staging environment, which I was uh, running um, the other day. And now let's um, redeploy to production. And this is basically doing a Terraform apply. In this case, we're using Amazon EC2. So it's going against Amazon and running, in, basically instantiating a production environment on Amazon EC2 uh, per the um, per the configuration Terraform configuration file specifications. So it's going to add a VPC. It's going to add an EC2 machine. It's going to add a security group. It's going to add uh, you know subnets. Everything that it needs uh, to um, and everything that it needs, and it was specified in the configuration file. So it's still creating. Okay. 
Good, so the apply is complete. So let's go to Amazon and there should be now a production environment. Besides the stage and here it is, okay. Cool. Now I'm not going to deploy staging because I already have one running. So let's move on to the next uh, feature. Oh, just in case before we move on to the next feature, these are the, the steps to re recreate what I just uh, demoed to you. Some interesting resources here that I want to leave you uh, leave with you before we move on to the next feature is uh, here's the link to the demo project that we, you just saw. Uh, and there is uh, three interesting pro three projects that I found very interesting uh, about the same topic. There is uh, one uh, from Emily Ring that shows multiple Terraform reports uh, for different environments. There is one for Nicol from Nicholas Click, uh, which shows how to use Terraform with AWS. And there is there is one for Matt Casas, uh, which shows multiple environments uh, with Terraform. Uh, it shows a very nice um, directory organization with multiple uh, pipelines. And if you want to provide feedback for this specific um, feature, there's an epic that you can you can add your input uh, feedback to. All right. So the next one is read-only access to Terraform state API. So the current state is is very simple. Before this release, uh, GitLab uh, users without maintainer access could not interact with Terraform commands, especially Terraform plan. So this would fail here. And um, so if you were not a maintainer, you could not uh, you know, run production plan and see the reports. Uh, what 13.2 introduces is uh, now that if a developer, if you have the developer role, you can actually uh, you know, have read-only access to the Terraform state file API, I'm sorry. And in this case, uh, we use this user called Sasha Soft Developer to demonstrate uh, this specific uh, feature. Why does it matter? Uh, developers are able to run Terraform plan to see infrastructure configuration changes. Uh, also, developers as GitHub stakeholders can effectively collaborate on infrastructure configuration updates. And for us, it enriches our infrastructure's code story and enhances, enhances our GitHub's positioning of taking DevOps best practices to infrastructure uh, automation. These are the steps on how it works. You basically create a developer branch. You add uh, Sasha Softdev as a developer to your project. You log in as Sasha Softdev and then you basically run the pipeline on the newly created branch and you'll see it work. Uh, the Terraform plan will execute for Sasha uh, because she's able to access the uh, state file uh, uh, on a read-only basis. Here are some interesting um, uh, resources to follow up on, that, um, on this specific uh, feature. That's all I have. Thank you very much.